this is Rachel from Ray K Books, and I am interviewing Kelly Hashway, author of Touch of Death with my partner here, Katie, from Ray K Books as well. Hello, everyone. Hi. So, Kelly, we are going to help you promote Touch of Death. Can you please give us a quick synopsis of what that story is about? Sure. Um, Touch of Death is the story of a group of necromancers who happen to be descended from Medusa and are at war with Hades. Awesome. Okay, My so what... Oh, yeah, go with Katie. Yeah, it's, it, do the, the cover again. Oh, yeah. I have that right here. Mm, so pretty. pretty. <laughs> so um, we actually have a Twitter question. Um, what? Who's the off uh, the model on the cover? Um, you know, I don't really know, um, but I did hear a rumor that she's in a new movie. I keep getting people posting on my Facebook pictures of the cover model in some movie, and I don't even know what the movie is, but apparently she's going to be in one, so oh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. Really cool. So I read, I didn't read your book yet, but it looks really good because it has the Zodiac in it, and I'm really into those types of books. So how much research did you put into the Zodiac when writing this book? Um, well, all of the characters are born under the 13th sign of the Zodiac, which is Ophiuchus, and I actually happen to be born under that sign as well, so that was pretty cool. Um, most people call it Serpentarius, though. Um, but I actually found a lesser-known myth about Medusa and Ophiuchus, so that's how the whole thing started, um, with the crossover between the two. So um, the main character, Jody, has a lot of, I guess you would say, my characteristics. Um, I tried to base her off of me and you know what I could find. There's not a lot on that sign though because it's not really um, widely accepted yet so they're still kind of researching it. So a little bit I did research and other stuff I kind of played with and just went off of you know my own characteristics since I am born under the sign. That's awesome. We interviewed a couple weeks ago um, Kristen Tubb, who wrote the 13th sign, have you checked that one out? It's all about the uh, it. <laughs> awesome. Good. I need to. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, go ahead. When did you decide to become a writer? Um, I would have to say probably when I was in elementary school. Um, I started writing shori uh, short stories and poetry, and I actually attempted to write a novel back then, which was really funny because I'm dating myself, but that's when um, we actually had the three by five floppy disks <laughs> for the <laughs> computer, and I wrote the entire thing as one run-on sentence and told myself I was going to go back and put in, you know, periods and everything later on, which I totally never did, but <laughs> I guess I've just always kind of this is what I wanted to do. So, oh, so you when you know? were when you were writing it, like, did did any of do well, do any of your current works have anything to do with that younger writing? Um, I guess in a way, but um, I grew up reading R.L. Stein, so I was always reading like the Fear Street books, and I mm -hmm. love um all things like creepy because of R.L. Stein, so that sort of carried over into my writing now, but I swear that first novel was, I don't know, it was about like an orchestrated shark attack. It was the worst story you could ever think <laughs> of. I was in elementary school, so what do you want? <laughs> no, R.L. Stein um, gave me nightmares. Thank you, Goosebumps. Appreciate that night of the living dummy. Still gets me. Uh, so... What are some authors that inspire you? Um, I am a huge Rick Riordan fan, and I was so upset because at BEA he was there, and I was on his line, but I was way far back because of my own signing, so I did not get to meet him. But uh, I absolutely love the Percy Jackson series, and I reread parts of those books um, pretty much on a weekly basis just because I'm... I absolutely love his writing. Um, I also really love Becca Fitzpatrick. I think she's great, and her Hush Hush series is one of my favorites. That's awesome. So you mentioned that you like R.L. Stein. Do you think that you would ever write kind of a horror novel? 
Um, well, I mean, Touch of Death is considered borderline. It's paranormal horror. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a book uh, coming out called The Monster Within, which is a little bit more um, horror. I haven't gone completely there yet, but I'm not going to say I won't. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I'm excited. <laughs> we need another R.L. Stein. <laughs> I can only dream to be like that. <laughs> Good luck. We're we're rooting for you. Yes. <laughs> so, what did you learn anything from writing this series, and what was it? Um, I learned that I could write a book in 14 days. <laughs> wow, um, it took which is kind of crazy. Yeah, I, I actually learned how to fast draft from writing this series, which was something I've never done. Usually it took me months to write a book. Um, but with this one, I had editors interested in it from the pitch, and I kind of had to write quickly. So I, I kind of found out that that's, that strategy works better for me because the story almost writes itself, and I get out of the way of it, which really is better in the end. So I've been doing that since I finished the series. It's really awesome. Congratulations. Thanks. So you mentioned that Jody is based off of yourself kind of a lot. Is there any other characters in the book that's based off of people that you know? Not really. I try not to base my characters off of people I know. Um, I'm not even sure how Jody came out to be so much like me. Uh, I guess it was because of the whole 13th sign of the Zodiac and, you know, trying to um, hone in on those characteristics, but... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would say she's the only one that's really based off of anyone, especially how accident-prone she is. I mean, just this week I've burned myself twice and cut myself <laughs> twice. So, <laughs> reading the book, she's so accident-prone, and, and that's totally me. <laughs> I can get hurt just sitting here. I probably will before we're done. So, <laughs> so if you were stranded on a desert island, which character of yours would you want by your side? Alex. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I have a huge crush on Alex, my character. I do. Um, I, I guess I kind of wrote him to be my ideal. Um, <laughs> for Jody, uh -huh. sorry. Um, yeah, he's in, that's kind of weird because, you know, in the beginning she, she thinks he's a stalker, but um, he's a stalker in the sexiest way possible, let's say that. So, plus he's really handy. I mean, he's always got always got the pocket knife. He's always prepared. So, yeah, I'd want to be stranded with him. <laughs> when you wrote him, or rather when you wrote the whole book, did you have the specific plot in mind, or did you just kind of start writing and watch where it took you and just went the way it went? Um, well, my, my secret to fast drafting is that I actually spend a really long time with plotting. Um, I wrote 24 pages of notes for the actual story, and that's not counting my research that I had to do for Greek mythology and the 13th sign of the Zodiac. Um, but once I started writing the book, I actually threw out everything, <laughs> just about, and went with the story because um, Jody decided she didn't really like where I was taking it. So I just went with what she wanted, and I still continue to plot that much before every book, but I usually do end up throwing it out. So my characters so, are smarter than me. <laughs> in the end, which, I, is, it, is it really hard, or which part of writing the book is hardest for you? Um, I would say probably plotting, because I'm so eager to get writing, but I don't like to ever stare at a blank screen, so um, basically I try to make sure that I have the characters in my head as clearly as possible and the storyline as clearly as possible and that way um, you know I don't ever have nothing to fall back on if my characters aren't running with the story on that particular day. You mentioned that Jody didn't like where the story was going. Do your characters still talk to you after? I love that aspect actually. I love when authors talk about their characters, like it's somebody that they know and was in their head. Does she still talk to you? Um, yeah, it, the hardest thing for me was, you know, the 
the last book in the series is coming out in January, and I cry every time I read that book. Every single set of edits, I have cried, and I've told my editor that I cried again. Um, it, it's so hard, and that's why I went back and I wrote a prequel to the series, which is out now, and it's free. Um, and actually, there's going to be a novella coming out that's Alex's, or, uh, yeah, Alex's story, um, which is also a prequel to the series, but yeah, I have trouble letting go, and she was the first character who I felt like I didn't create, like she literally just popped in my head one day and said, hi, I'm Jodi Marshall, and it was, it was like I was meeting a new friend, so she was really hard to let go of. Do you think that in the future you're going to maybe do a spin-off and not say goodbye at all to Jodi, but just kind of still keep that world in another writing, another series? Um, my ideal, and I, I haven't even talked to my editor about this, but um, I would love to do a book with Jody and the main character from The Monster Within, Sam. I think a crossover book between the two series would be absolutely awesome, <laughs> um, yeah. because those were the two female characters that I wrote that I connected with the most, and th I think their worlds clashing would just make an awesome story. So how did you come up with the title? Um, I am terrible, terrible with titles. Um, <laughs> uh, Touch of Death was actually, oh my goodness, I, I can't even tell you what the original title was, um, but I'm one of those people that I'll title a manuscript and everybody will just tell me that's awful, and <laughs> I have to come up with, you know, so many different ideas before I can come up with a title that I'm happy with, but uh, my agent actually suggested a title very similar to Touch of Death, and I just reworked it a little bit, and that's what it evolved into. But it, it did take a while to come up with. So you have a say in your, what the title would be. Did you also have a say, I have to go back to the cover too, did you have a say in that as well? Um, it depends. I mean, I have other books with other publishers, and I've been lucky where all of my publishers so far have asked for my input and, um, you know, what I wanted. I actually found the image that was used for the cover of Touch of Death. Um, mm -hmm. When I was looking for ideas of what I wanted on the cover, I saw this image, and as soon as I saw her, I said, that's Jody." So I brought that forth to Kate Kynek at um, Spencer Hill Press, and when I saw my cover for the first time and saw that it was the image that I picked, I couldn't have been happier about it. Congratulations. Thank you. So I guess right now we are going to play Would You Rather? Oh my god! Okay. <laughs> so Would You Rather, for people who do not know, is a game where I ask Kelly two options and Kelly has to decide which option she likes. An example is me saying, would you rather eat oranges for the rest of your life or apples for the rest of your life? And she has to choose which one. So, I will start with the first would you rather. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Would you rather write... No. Which one should I even do first? How about this? <laughs> Who would you rather have a, have as a child? Harry Potter or Hermione Granger? Ooh, uh, I'm going to go Hermione. Sorry, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Um, she's just wicked smart. <laughs> she's a tough girl. <laughs> she is. Plus, she I is. have a daughter, so, you know, I'm not sure how I do with a son. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, would you rather be a vampire or a werewolf? Ooh, definitely vampire. Transforming into a werewolf just looks painful. <laughs> it, does, it does look really painful. <laughs> would you rather read a book that is written poorly but has an excellent story or read one with weak content but is written well? Ooh, <laughs> that's almost like a dead tie. Dun, dun, dun. Um, can I can I do secret option three and go for the one that has a better voice? <laughs> okay, cop out. What is it? <laughs> All right, I'll go for the written better. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's fine. There's no wrong answers here, Kelly. <laughs> 
Uh, would you rather only read books that you have never read before or only reread your top ten favorites? Ah! <laughs> I know um, that one's a little <laughs> That is tough. All right, I'm going to go with books I've never read before. Just because I'm afraid I'd miss out on some really good authors if I only read those I've already read. No, well, that's great. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of a hard question for me, too. I mean, like, it's your favorite book, but on the other hand, there are so many other choices. <laughs> so, my well, last... How are you going to find new favorites? Hmm? How are you gonna find new, how are you gonna find new favorites if you don't keep reading books? It's exactly. a really hard question. Exactly. Um, my last would you rather question is would you rather fight next to Hermione from Harry Potter or Katniss from Hunger Games? Where did my video go? Mm, um, I have to go with Hermione because I have to admit that I have not read the Hunger Games. <laughs> <laughs> For shame! I, no, I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> we'll, 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 I'll pick another question. Um, would you rather write a novel that changes somebody's life but receives no mainstream attention, or a novel that is incredibly successful in sales but that no one thinks about afterwards? Ooh, um, I, I don't think I want to be forgotten that easily, so I'm going to go with writing the novel that changes someone's life. Mm. That's good. Um, how about, would you rather be a shadow hunter or a wizard attending Hogwarts? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I want to go for wizard. That, that's got to be wicked cool. <laughs> yeah. Plus, I want to meet Snape. <laughs> Oh, you have a crush on Snape? <laughs> I wouldn't say a crush, but... <laughs> Can I do a follow-up question, then? Would you rather be in Gryffindor or Slytherin? Oh. See, now, here's the really strange thing. Even though I write about Medusa and there are snakes in the Touch of Death books, I am deathly afraid of snakes. <laughs> so, as odd as it sounds, I'm going to have to go with Hogwarts. <laughs> I mean, um, Gryffindor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. I like, well, I don't know. I was about to say something about snakes, and then I totally forgot, and I'm still talking, so I should probably keep talking about the next thing, which is, hey, we're going to go into teams. I'm going to say three teams, and I want to know which ones yours are. Such as, number one, are you Team Edward or Jacob? Am I really supposed to answer that one? Yeah. <laughs> you okay. Do, you could do Team Bella. Some people have done that if you really don't want to. <laughs> um, I hate to do it, but I didn't like Jacob in the least bit. <laughs> I oh. didn't. It was the whole I'm in love with Bella, I'm in love with their daughter thing. I, I couldn't get on board with that. <laughs> so I got to go, Edward. <laughs> <laughs> and number two is Team Gale. Oh, oh, if you haven't done, you haven't done. Hunger Games. Okay, scratch that one. Three. Simon <laughs> have or Jake? Have you seen the movies? Then you can ask. Oh, yeah, did you see the movies? Of the Hunger Games? No. Okay, then we're skipping it all together. <laughs> um, Simon I'm sorry, it reminds me. Do you guys know the short story, The Lottery? Do you know that short story? No. Okay. Yeah, it, it reminds me so much of that short story, and that short story traumatized me when I was younger. So I just I can't read, <laughs> read or watch. Aww. I can't. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, Hunger Games traumatized me too. I can't reread it. I can't do it without sobbing. So mm -hmm. I get it. <laughs> um, oh yeah, the the third one was Team Simon or Jace from Mortal Instruments. <sighs> you guys are gonna kill me. <laughs> oh. What yeah. is it? Now I'm very interested. <laughs> Can you tell I've been writing nonstop for like three years now? <laughs> I'm really far behind in my to be read list. <laughs> it's okay. Oh. You have all the time in the world, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> totally fine. So, for Touch of Death, which act actress would you like to see playing Jodie? 
Well, since I just found out that the cover model is, in fact, an actress, I'm going to have to say her because she is, in my mind, exactly what Jodi looks like. Nice. Well, then, what about for Alex? Who would you like to play Alex? That one is so tough. You know, um, in an interview, I believe, I believe I couldn't answer that when I was asked to choose my movie cast because, like I said, Alex is kind of my ideal. However, um, I don't know if you guys saw the TV series before they canned it, and I was so sad, but The Nine Lives of Chloe King, um, Alec in that would make a good Alex, I think. He was very kick butt and almost stalkerish at times. <laughs> so, can you share a little of your current work with us? Like what you're currently writing or what you would like to write in the future? Um, okay, I'm actually working on a couple of different things now because I have um, a few books coming out in 2014, which I'm doing edits on. Um, and I also just um, announced at the beginning of this month that I'm also writing under a pen name. Um, I'm writing contemporary romance as Ashlyn Drake. And right now I'm actually working on a young adult contemporary romance, um, which is called Our Little Secret, which is about a girl who falls for her best friend's brother. Um, and what starts out as it seems to be just an issue of, you know, possibly losing her best friend actually becomes something much, much larger. But I, I can't share that part yet. <laughs> so what, when uh, will that be released? Do you have uh, years, dates yet? Um, that one has not even seen a single editor yet. It's still in the revision phase. So that's my current work in progress that I'm working on right now. Okay. And what, what made you want to do a, um, a double name? Uh, well, I write a lot of different things. I actually started out writing picture books, and I have a middle grade coming out um, in the fall of 2014, and with my young adult novels, um, I just like to kind of experiment and try different things. And I started writing contemporary romance and realized that it's not the same audience as my younger works, and I didn't really want people to accidentally pick up a book they shouldn't be reading because um, I do have some NA titles out that are for mature readers. So to kind of avoid any confusion with branding, I decided that I was going to use a pen name for those. Well, that's smart. That's smart because if like a middle grader looks for more books of yours and they'll see romance, they'll be like really confused. <laughs> it would not be good. No, that's smart marketing. Katie, do you have any questions? Yeah, what are you currently Katie? reading? Yeah. Is it just me? I'm here. Or Can is you she see me? frozen? I think she might be frozen. <laughs> Katie, you're frozen. Can you see me now? Is it working? What am I currently reading? Um, I'm actually reading. I see you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, you just, you just asked the question, what are you currently reading? So she's answering that now. Um, I actually am reading a book that I'm going to blurb. I was asked to blurb for another author, so I'm not sure if I'm allowed to share the title yet because it's not up anywhere, um, but it is another story that is about Medusa, which was why I was asked to read it. Um, before that, I just finished up um, The Dollhouse Asylum, which was awesome. So, mm -hmm. Who's yeah, that that's by? pretty much it. <laughs> um, the Dollhouse Asylum is Mary Gray. Okay. Nice. So when authors ask you, hey, can you read my book and review it, what's your reaction now? Like, oh my god, you ask me? Or like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, honestly, I'm always like, why me? Um, <laughs> like, why do you want me to blurb your book? But um, no. <laughs> I'm honored when they ask me because, you know, like I said, I, I don't really myself as a big name so you know I, I see that as a big honor when somebody wants my name on their book. <laughs> right, right. Uh, when you're reading do you prefer... Okay so we... Sorry go ahead. <laughs> no 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 the last question will be Katie's. Take it away Katie. Oh. You, uh, when you're reading, do you prefer ebooks or traditional paper hardback books? Um, I actually read one of each at the same time, which I know that sounds weird, but I'm always reading two books at once. Um, and the reason why I do that is um, 
I'm the type of person who doesn't like to waste any time. So when I'm cooking or I'm even getting ready in the morning and doing my hair, I have my Kindle read to me. Um, and then also I usually run on the treadmill in the morning and as crazy as it sounds, I take a paperback and I stick it in my magazine holder and I read while I'm running. So, and I don't like my Kindle to bop around like that. So I, that's why I always have one of each and I love them both. <laughs> No, that's great. I, I like both too. I think it's great that uh, you know you can read on multiple platforms. It makes uh -huh. it easier. Actually, there's one more question that everybody always asks in every chat, so it has to be answered. Do you have any advice for aspiring writers? Yes. Um, read as much as you can. Um, that's the best form of research. It's also the most fun form of research. Um, I think that's how I found my voice when I started writing was actually um, by reading Rick Riordan's books. So, and that's part of the reason why I love him so much. But yes, read as much as you can and write as much as you can, even if it's only you know a hundred words a day. Just keep writing because that's how you get better. All right. Thank you so much for your interview. Now it is the giveaway time, which is a great time. So uh, everybody, Kelly here is going to give away internationally a touch of death, or the second one, kiss, kiss of death. Is that what it's called? Stalked by death. <laughs> okay, touched by death or stalked by death. And in order to win, you must do, well, two things and one's optional. First, subscribe to Ray K Books. Second, comment on the video. And third, this isn't mandatory because not everybody has a Twitter, but for extra points, you have to follow Kelly Hashway on Twitter. And if you follow her, please put in your comments your username so I can verify that entry. Um, and that is it. This will end next week, uh, next Friday, so 29th, I believe, the 29th. And thank you so much, Kelly, for joining us. I had a lot of fun. Oh, thank you. So did I. Thank you very much. Okay. And so. Thanks for playing Would You Rather. Yeah, I love that game. I love Would You Rather. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much, and I'll see you guys, uh, I think the next video will be Monday, so I'll see you Monday.